As Canada's national team competes in the 2023 Women's World Cup, the high rate of injuries in women's soccer is leading to renewed calls for some better financial support. Several prominent Canadian players have been sidelined by injury this year. Experts say that ACL tears are affecting women more than men and that squads need more funding for training and for medical care. For more on this, we are joined this morning by Alan Hislop, the co-founder of The Gist, a women-led sports media brand. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me on. Listen, I want to bring everybody up to speed. There have been a lot of injuries to our Canadian players on the roster this year. Defender Kadisha Buchanan, she was injured in April. Forward Nichelle Prince, recovering from an Achilles injury. Both are on the roster this year, but forward Janine Becky and midfielder Desiree Scott, they're both out with injuries. Those are big blows to this club. What other kinds of differences exist in medical and training support between men and women's soccer? Yeah, so it's really brutal to see all of those injuries, Anne-Marie. When you're looking at really injuries in soccer, I do want to focus on the ACL because that is one that is impacting female footballers differently than male. Women are four to six times more likely to have an ACL tear in comparison to men, and that's really chalked up to different biomechanical differences where women have smaller ACLs and a little bit looser ligaments, and those ligaments, when they are loose, are more likely to tear. Um, and so when we're thinking about the financial side of things, how we can change our training. It's really how we can invest more in research and invest more in understanding the preventative measures in the women's game. Women, when it comes to sports performance research in particular, only represent three to six percent of those participants. And so it's no reason, it's no surprise really why we don't understand enough about women's knees on how to improve them and how to reduce the likelihood of injury. Yeah, I, I like how Janine Becky framed it. She told Reuters about her frustrations with the high number of injuries, saying, you've changed the schedule to mimic the men, yet you're not giving female players the same level of resources. If you're going to ask an elite athlete to play 50 games a season, you have to provide them with top-of-the-line care. She makes a really good point. How are other athletes speaking out? Yes, and the probability just increases the more and more that women are playing and the more that it's impacting their knees. And unfortunately, this isn't only a Canadian Soccer Federation issue. This is a global women's sports issue. 25% of the top players in the world have been impacted by ACL injuries. And federations just don't have the same money to actually invest in supporting women as they're increasing their training. The players in Jamaica have spoken up about this. The players in Zambia have spoken up about this. The the players in England have spoken up about this and they have actually changed some of their training as it relates to a woman's menstrual cycle and different players menstrual cycle to um, help prevent those ACL injuries and also when you're looking at Spain and the Spanish women's team they have also spoken up about this as well as it comes to equal pay and funding for sure but also talking about the equal treatment side of things and the level of training and the level of care um, and the level of support as it comes to practices and games. I know we've been looking at them all as individual things, but really they're all tied so closely together. The Canadian team took job action earlier this year. That was before returning to training after Canada soccer threatened legal action. So what's the latest on their fight for pay equity? Yes, yeah, so we think that the collective bargaining agreement is going to be signed any day now. The latest that we have heard from Captain Christine Sinclair is that they're on the verge of signing on the dotted line. She said that before they played their game against um, Nigeria, which of course led to a nil-nil draw. So. Again, we're hoping any day now that it is actually going to be signed. And again, there is a difference between equal pay and equal treatment. And I think what Janine Becky is really getting at is that equal treatment to really support all of these players as they're going through these injuries and to help prevent these injuries. And equal pay is a whole other subside of it. The mental game of Christine Sinclair right now to you know be focused on one thing, but also on this fight is unbelievable. Quickly, I want to get your thoughts looking ahead to Wednesday's game. What are you watching for? You know what? I am so nervous for Wednesday's game. I wasn't really inspired with too much confidence coming out of that draw against Nigeria and Ireland as much as it's their first World Cup appearance ever. They have played really strong. They did pretty well against Australia to only lose to them 1-0. They've played the U.S. women's national team a couple of times in exhibition friendlies and they played decently well and whenever you play the best team in the world, right. that's that's great. Yeah. I do think that having Jesse Fleming back on the field for Canada Canada is going to make a major difference. And because of her, Canada is going to walk away Amazing. with the win. All right, Ellen, thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me on.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.